Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my shop. Welcome to my channel. My name is Keith and I'm your host. Before we get started, class, how about the Pledge of Allegiance? All right, today we have a pair of brake drums that we have an issue with, and uh, we got to uh, uh, set them up. And this diameter inside here that registers is about an eighth of an inch per side tight on the uh, the hub. And we just made them a new set of wheel studs, and they don't fit the 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 new drums don't fit the studs. <clears throat> Now, the studs we made proper because we fit them to their old brake drums, okay? This one here is pretty well used up, but the flange, the drum, and our new bolts are all matching, so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to open it. These actually mic up about three to 4,000 small, um, and they have a little burr in them, so they're, they're just a little too tight all right we measured our inside there and we measured our inside here and we know what we got to do we're gonna set this up in the lathe we could either go in the K&T and set it on the table come in with our boring head but center of this is really really tight on the machine over there that you know it's it's so close it's like I don't need to actually take it over there and set it up but we could come in with a boring head and a mill and do it but I think our best bet is to put these in the uh, closing lathe so let's go see if we can fit this in the closing lathe all right a drum measures uh, 19 inch on the diameter which means we're gonna have to pull the gap we can only swing 17 inches over this gap and the gap length actually gives us uh, we're, we're about 14 and a half before we actually come back to here to hit anything. But that means we'd have to be over the chuck as well or to the face plate or whatever we're going to run it in here. I think the only way we're actually going to be able to grab that and keep it inside the distance because we only have like six inches in front of the chuck before the flat. So we're not going to make that all 11 inches out here or whatever. So we're going to have to have some of the drum over the outside here. So I'm going to pull a gap, I'm going to take and turn these jaws around so that they'll come in against the breaking surface. We'll put something over them so that there's no marring on that surface. And then we're going to crank it out and then we're going to take and manipulate our diameter until we're running through to take a skim cut on it. That diameter or that surface that we're cutting is very short in length. So if we get this to hold it true enough this way, dial it. And then take a skim cut we'll keep the registration of the drum and we're not touching any faces so all we're doing is a peripheral bore we turned our jaws around we pulled all of our fasteners out of our gap we're gonna lift the gap out and we're gonna we always set it on that little stand there or stool or on a block or on another flat surface usually with a towel and we leave the mating surfaces up so that uh, when we get ready to put it together, we wipe clean, do the same thing there, and then set it on a pool of oil and make sure that the thing is really floating in there. And then we dial it in and put it back in place. And uh, we're never afraid to pull that out if we need to. Um, a long time ago when I started pulling out gaps, I used to, I used to have the fear that I wasn't gonna put them back together and I was never gonna get the lathe to be 100%. And, you know and pretty soon you get over that anal tentative uh, habit and you just make sure it's clean when you put it back together and you make sure that it's dialed in you just do what you're supposed to do all right we're gonna pull the gantry over we're probably gonna move the leg over here a little bit and we're gonna get a drum over here and maybe this strap here will go around that drum and give us a nice little tail so that we can come in here and 
put the uh, the drum in place on the lathe. Let's check it out. After we make sure that we can actually get it on here, then we're going to see about putting a, a aluminum strip on each one of these jaws. Maybe a wrap of tape or something so that it holds it in place while we get this launched in there. Okay, probably gonna have to come up some more. Okay. Okay. Somewhere in there, that's what it looks like. All right, we'll have to open the chuck some more. Who knows what that noise is? <laughs> I got this tight. There ain't a loose darn thing in this thing. It's got to be probably something in the gearbox resonating in the drum sound here. All right. Let's put an indicator on there and see where we're at. And... I think we can just we can just put one right here. Most important thing is the peripheral run out. And I'm within about sixteen thousandths right there. Okay. That's our low. and yeah 16 right on the money okay so we just got to tap it that way a little bit or out on this back side here we'll pitch it that way um yeah my mouth <clears throat> okay there's eight Pretty close. Okay, let's see where we're at here. There's zero. And about five. About two and a half. Where we went. Alright, we're fluctuating about a thousandth there. About a half a thousandth. I'm pretty sure that half a thousandth is good on an Oshkosh. All right, let's. I put my ratchet down here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay. And we are. We're on the outer limits here. Once again. Tighten it down. About one thousandths right there. Okay, just for just for GP here. What are we running out right there?
almost a full 10 okay but we're only cutting this right here <clears throat> Or that short distance right there. That's it. Okay, let's set up and let's go ahead and machine this to our diameter. Let's see what gear we got in here. There we go. Okay, we're going to come in here and we're going to touch off. We're only taking a 16 per side, an 8 total. It's, uh, <clears throat> I think it's like 11 and a quarter and it needs to go to 11 and 3 eighths, something like that. I know that that was just a little bit more. I'm going to come back in and kind of touch off again. Okay, we're just barely touching it. Yeah, it was 2,000 strong. Okay. We're going to take 20. It's about one-third of what we need. Excellent. Okay, another 20. Okay, we're going to take a measurement. We're still smaller, that's a good thing. Okay, we're at um, 0.3. Thirty-eight or point three thirty-four. Okay, we're going to take another twenty thousand. Should be within a couple now. Point three seventy three. All right, so we're two thousands under what we need to be. We're gonna go double check the old one and come back for a final cut. 
Okay, we, we do get a couple thousands over on that one in several places, and I think maybe a couple thousands clearance uh, would be in order. So we're just going to go for another two thousands. That should be our finished diameter. All right, we're three and a half thousands over. That's good. All right, we're gonna take a look at this. We still have a slight chamfer on the underside. That's gonna be the most important, and I think we wanna break this edge right here. So we'll probably pop our, no our other boring bar in here. That'll let us just put a form tool and get those two diameters uh, broke right there. Our sample actually looks like this amount of chamfer on the inside right now we have all the way around and it is sharp on this edge but we, we're not going to leave this sharp to the hand. So I'm going to actually spin it and I'm just going to hit it with my scotch bright. Now we know nobody's going to cut theirself. All right, over to the drill press. We got to open up these holes slightly. Okay, we got our drum bolted down through two of our holes into uh, our T slots down here, so we can we can maneuver this thing around. And we're just above our hole right now. We're going to leave our our knee and our table loose and we're gonna let it kind of define and follow the hole this is a 1 and 1 64th drill bit so we're just basically just giving it uh, a bare uh, bare minimum clearance over one inch diameter We got our feed connected, but we're actually hand feeding this down, and we're already we're all the way through. Okay, let's find our bolt. Okay, I meant our stud. There we go. Okay, let's go around and get the rest of the holes. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and let's get it down on the ground here first. Down, down's good. <laughs> Picking up, that's, that's another story. All right, we, we put the drill through all of our holes and we got a piece of emery here on our jig. And we're just gonna break each of these holes all the way around. <laughs> One quick test. There we go. A little bit of a setup. Um, we have two machines that we got to clean the cast iron that's been uh, flung around because th that's what these uh, 
uh, pieces of ours, duct aisle or cast iron, and um, you know we clean up that mess there, and it's all set. But uh, now they can take finish installing this stud here and get their wheels on on the truck. All right, customers uh, carrying out the other one there, and uh, he's going to come back in and get this one. Until next time, get her done.